I'm here with Jackie Smith, Democratic candidate for the Iowa Senate District 1 race. Thanks for joining us. You bet. So to start off with, can you share a little bit about yourself for folks who may be unfamiliar? Sure. Um, lifelong resident of Sioux City. I raised my family here. Um, actually graduated from college, uh, Briarcliff College. Did have to get a master's degree. I was a speech pathologist. So I left, went to Baylor University to get my uh, master's degree, came back, worked for 34 years in education as a speech pathologist. And so I worked in both ur uh, rural schools, urban schools. Um, towards the end of my career, I decided to take a run at political office. I was raised in a political family, a community. My mom was a community activist. And I guess it just took hold that you get back to, com uh, to the community. And I was ready to do that. My family was raised. and. I thought I w was on the wrong track, so I threw my hat in the ring four years ago, flipped my seat from red to blue, and here I am again <laughs> asking for another four years. Yeah. So what initially made you decide to run again? You know, like I just said, I didn't care for the direction uh, that I was going. I worked in uh, schools in my Senate district, and I saw what the families needed. Couple that with years of door knocking. I, like I said, I was in a political family. Our family believed that you would go to the doors, you would engage residents, you see what they need. And I thought that the cuts in education, uh, I thought the scales were tipping too much to corporations, not enough for middle class. And I thought I could offer some policies and, and work towards improving uh, Iowa. Yeah. So what issue is your top priority? You know, my issues really stem from what I see, you know, out in the field. So we were five weeks um, late in getting out of session. So I started walking in May and I've walked thousands of doors and, and I'll be close to 5,000 by the time we get done. And I'm very proud of that because Sioux City is very hilly and there's a lot <laughs> of steps. So just physically it's it's. You know, at my age, it, it's been um, it's been fun actually. But based on that, I see that it does not matter where you live, doesn't matter your income level, uh, doesn't matter the color of your skin. People basically want the same thing. They want to be able to have a good job, make a good living. They want their kids to do well. They, so they need a good education system, and they want to feel safe in their neighborhoods. And and actually. What really has come out is people want to feel connected to each other. After, you know, the last few very tough years of isolation and coming out of COVID, um, I've had long conversations on doorsteps. And it started with just wellness checks, uh, like, how are you doing? This has been strange. And it's been more focused now as we've gone on. And um, really, it's we just need to expand the middle class and... Uh, provide for them and I, I have ideas on what we can do and what we haven't done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what sets you apart from your opponent? I think what sets me apart is that, <laughs> let me see how I can phrase this. I think I have a better grasp on the policies that are needed. I believe my opponent will represent a very small, extreme group of, of um, constituents. His first um, two issues out of the gate were um, taking away abortion um, health care from women, no exceptions, he's on record as saying that, and wanting uh, more guns distributed. Now those are just plain wrong based on what I've heard from, from constituents. The beginning of the summer after the school shooting, so many people talked to me about gun safety and, and sensible gun laws. So I think we're out of sync for that. The uh, last few years, we, you know, we opened up, uh, you know, maybe possibly minors getting guns that shouldn't have it because permitting uh, was lessened. Background checks don't necessarily have to happen. And those are all things that put more guns on the streets. So I stand with the sheriff. I stand with police that we, you know, need to have some sensible laws because too many children are getting shot and too many police officers are getting shot too. So that would be one area. The other area is, you know, I am quite sure that 
it, my opponent will be another yes vote for the governor. And as one very prominent uh, business person said to me, we need some checks and balances. The, having control by one party of all three branches just does not give a level playing field to all families. So I feel that I bring that voice. Yeah. So if you're approached by voters with issues that they want you to look into, what's your process to going into that? You know, I, I take notes, and there are just all sorts of uh, different issues. There was something on window tent, and this was just recently, um, and I sat on a subcommittee for window tent. doesn't sound like a big issue, but the troop, and the bill was to, um, uh, to increase the window tent, to be able to make um, windows darker, and four troopers, uh, were behind me in this very small room, there are three of us on the subcommittee, saying uh, we don't want that, that makes our job safer. They had examples of going up to a car not knowing if someone had a gun. But this gentleman showed me, took off his sunglasses, goes, I know it's about the window tent. Can I ask you about your vote on that? He was paying attention and he was all sunburnt and he had some sun damage. So he says, I need a tinted window. So I can go back and I already did do some research on that and evidently you don't need real dark windows to, to block out the UV, but I can take stories like that. Let me give another one on childcare. Talk to a woman, she said, I am an example of someone who had been on, on food stamps. She goes, I have pulled myself out of, of poverty. She goes, I'm a little bit above it. I work at Head Start now. She says, I want to talk to you about child care. She said, we have great programs if you are at poverty level or, or below. But if you are at income level right above that and you're that family, um, she said, more, more needs to be done. I was happy to tell her what Democrats have increased tax credit, child care tra tax credits for that income level, but not enough. So my solution that I will take back specifically is to introduce legislation that increases income levels and uh, the amount of the tax credit because women are not going back to work because of, of the high cost of daycare. In fact, I hear stories of a family is not having another child because of daycare. So that's plain wrong, and uh, so that's something I can just take back. So that's how you're effective uh, if you're in the minority. You take the stories and, and you make sure that your policies are matching what you think most people need. So out on the campaign trail, what are some of the bigger issues that you've been hearing from voters? You know, I brought up guns before. I brought up uh, a woman's uh, right to an abortion. There's, you know, varying degrees on that. But honestly, the number one issue is rising prices and inflation. And every family that I've talked to, every person is affected by that. Uh, I am too. So, you know, it's like most people understand that's federal issues at the state level. We don't necessarily cause inflation. However, you know, people are looking at what can you do? And, and I think that's a very fair question. So uh, expanding child care credits, just like what we talked. I offered um, a tax proposal instead of giving the top 2%, um, you know, uh, a tax break, I would have kept them at the same level and, and lowered the taxes for the middle class. I would have targeted those. Uh, much more. We were able to, um, you know, re cut the tax on feminine hygiene products, diapers, uh, both adult and baby diapers. And believe it or not, that's a cost for many families. Um, and so I was proud to be able to support and, and vote for that. You know, so that that's it. Um, that, that's kind of how it goes down. You know, you talk to the people, it's a citizen's legislature, and you go back and, and, you know, you have to, you represent everyone after you're elected. Very different than a campaign. Very different. Uh, you can be pretty partisan in a campaign, but once you're elected, you have to do your best to, to weigh both sides and to be a good representative to everyone. And I think I've done well with that, and I offer a common sense voice. Well, those are the main questions that I had, unless there's anything else that you want to add or include. The only thing that I would add is that, um, you know, I sit on education committees, I come out of education committees, and the attack on public, public education is 
last four years has been inexcusable. And I believe that young families will come to Iowa if we can offer a world-class education system. That's the draw. That's what will get my kids back here. And uh, I want, I love uh, seeing you, you're a young person. My goal is, is to have a young, vibrant uh, committee. We've, uh, community, we've got to start. We have a cool art vibe here by young people. So that's what I want. I want families to be able to come here, raise a family, and, and love Iowa like I do. Awesome, well thanks for coming.